Hi, Brian Beam for Red Giant, here to talk to you today about Reflection, one of the plugins that make up Red Giant's new VFX suite. Let's go through some sample scenes and we'll get you up and running with this easy to use and really useful tool. So I have a scene set up here with some simple 3D text and a 3D background, and we've got Reflection applied to it, but let's go ahead and set that up from scratch. So I'm going to duplicate my comp going to delete the plugin and then I'm going to go to the effects drop down go to RGV effects and we'll add reflection now if you've used shadow it's got a very similar UI um, and one that we can't see very well on a white background so let's go to axis color in the effects controls and change it to something that we can see a lot better so now we can see it and uh, like in shadow as we move this up, we can get it closer and closer to our original object. We see that it's floating a little bit, so we want to make sure that the reflection is a little bit lower than where the reflection is. And uh, yeah, let's leave it there. So these are adjustable if you need to. You know, if you grab the left side, you could do that. The right side is the same way, and then this allows you to adjust the slant and the height. So let's stretch that reflection out just a little bit. We've got under reflection style, you've got opacity. So if we bring the opacity down, we can fade it out. And that's a easy way to start kind of dialing that in. Um, and then you've got softness, and softness is going to add blur to it you can see that it, almost immediately after we start turning softness up it starts to look much more realistic softness aspect is just another way to change the way that blur is applied you can see that as i turn it up the blur is getting more and more smeary There's a couple of different options for how the softness is calculated and uh, they create just different looks and you know you can figure out which one works best for you I tend to leave it on progressive linear so under softness type we've also got fade length and fade start if we dial down fade length you're gonna see that reflection get cut off closer and closer to the beginning so if we bring fade length all the way down to zero you're going to see that our reflection is gone so if you have a reflection that you need to not see all of say you've got an object that's sitting in a pool of water and the pool of water ends here so the reflection would end this is a really good way to trim that up then you could also fade start is going to basically tell the reflection to stay on a little bit longer before it fades out. So you can sort of picture that there's a gradient here and we're just telling it where to start in the gradient. We've also got scale reflection, which you probably won't end up using that often, and offset reflection. So if we bring offset down, you can see that it's a uh, not applying the blur on the edge but we can use that to kind of dial in if we need the reflection to start a little lower so this area doesn't have any reflection so we can kind of make that blend or we could bring it up and uh, offset the reflection above where that access line is um, creates just an extra little smeary look and starts that blur a little bit earlier so we bring it up and you can see that the reflection right now if i move it around is in front of the text so if we go to our blend modes and switch it from normal to behind you'll see that now it's tucked in just behind and we've got our reflection set up in a really clean, elegant way. So one of the things to keep in mind 
when you apply reflection is that it's always going to apply within the bounds of the bounding box. So you can see here that, you know, I can't move it off of the box. So there's a control here in reflection called clip to bounding box. And it's not going to matter for something like this that's a very small object. But if you have a large scene that you're trying to add reflection to, or a large object that you're trying to add reflection to, you're going to want to probably pre-compose. And I'll show you that in a second. But if I turn clip to bounding box off, now you can see that we're getting a reflection back. So if you're working with small objects, not a huge deal. But if you're working with bigger objects, um, let's take a look at this. So here's an example of why you would want to pre-compose. So if I go ahead and apply reflection, and you can see that the bounding box for this layer is just a little bit larger than the TVs. So if I bring this down, it's starting to get cut off. Now, if I turn clip to bounding box off so that it can see it, it works, but it's going to be a lot slower. But if I turn that off, let's delete reflection for a second and hit pre-compose and we'll move all of the attributes to a new composition. And now our bounding box is out here. And if we apply reflection, now it's nice and fast. So let's just set that to behind and then soften that up. Maybe bring the opacity down. And now we've got our reflection added back into the scene. Okay, one last scene to take a look at. There's another cool little tool that's built into the reflection plugin that allows us to turn down the source layer that's generating the reflection. So let's go ahead and duplicate our layer and we'll go add reflection to it. We'll turn off fractal noise for just a second. We're going to come back to that in a minute. So let's bring our softness up a little bit. And then let's go to source opacity. And as soon as we start turning down source opacity, you're going to see that our original part of the layer is going to go away. So now we're just left with the reflection. So now if we take that and we drag it back underneath our fractal noise, and let's set that to a luma mat. Now I've got a really easy way to start compositing the reflection into the scene with a little bit of extra added detail. And so we'll turn our source layer back on above the fractal noise. And then let's go ahead and add an optical glow. There's a really great one that's built into the new VFX suite. It's a little strong. Let's bring the amount down a little bit. Let me bring the size up. And there we go, integrated into the shot. So that's a quick look at the Reflection plugin, part of the new VFX suite from Red Giant. Thanks so much for watching.